Good morning to all, and thank you so much for being here to help us celebrate the life of a wonderful lady, Mary Elizabeth Yagel. And we're so glad that you're here. We want to, of course, be a comfort and a blessing to all the family and all the friends. And uh, we want to thank this dear family as well for sharing your mother, your grandmother, with First Baptist Church of Southwest Broward. We were so honored to have her as a part of our church family. And we extend our love and prayers to all that are here. Our goal today really is, is twofold. It is to honor our friend, Mary, and it is to glorify our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so that's our marching orders from Mary herself. So we want to make sure we do that. Let's all stand together. We'll have an opening word of prayer. We want to ask God's blessing on this time. And I'll lead in prayer, but I want to encourage you right where you're standing, if you would join me in your own heart, in a word of prayer, you know, prayer is something that all of us can do. And we have access to God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So join me in this prayer. Let's ask God's blessing on this time together. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the joy of salvation today. And Lord, we come to this service, this time, certainly with mixed emotions. And Lord God, there's no doubt sadness and sorrow. The Bible speaks about that as we have said goodbye to a dear loved one. And yet at the same time, as children of God, as Christian people, we sorrow as those that have hope. We have hope today. Lord, there is joy in our heart that Mary is with you. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And so we rejoice for her. We pray today for her family. We pray for her daughters and all the extended family. Lord, that your grace would always be sufficient in their life. May your arms wrap around them today and bless this time. May it be a sweet time, Lord. I, I pray for the memories. I pray for the songs and the eulogy, the Bible message. May everything lift up the name of Jesus Christ, the one whom Mary loved, the one whom she lived for. And may you be glorified in all things, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please remain standing with us. We're going to sing some of Mary's favorite songs today, all right? And uh, we're going to kind of turn this into a little bit of a church service, all right? So you, you bear with us. But one of her favorite songs was Victory in Jesus. And so this, I know this is a funeral memorial service, but this is more than that. This is a celebration of life service today. So let's sing with joy in our heart that Mary's with the Lord, and let's sing about the victory that she knew and that she wanted all of us to know. Victory in Jesus. Heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life to Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his glory, of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sin and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love moved to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing blood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing, how he made the lame to walk again and cause the blind to see. I cry, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. Love me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion 
Thank you for singing so well. You may be seated in our congregation. I'm going to invite our ladies trio to come on up and be ready to sing for us. And um, those of us who knew Mary well, we know that she was a mother. And of course, she had her own daughters and a family. But Mary had a way about her that many of us have talked about in re even in recent days that when you got around her, you, you just felt like she was your mother, you know. She had that motherly way about her. You felt like you were with your own mother or grandmother. She had a love like that. And uh, I remember <clears throat> many years as her pastor and her sitting right over here in her section on that end chair right there. And um, we, we'd celebrate Mother's Day, of course, every May. And we'd give out roses and and awards and prizes and so on and I guess just about every year Mary would win the eldest mother and <clears throat> somebody else will have to ascend to that throne now I guess but um but she would sit there and smile just humbly and sweetly but these ladies have a song on their heart they want to sing today and they knew and loved Mary they're members of our church and so may the words of this song be a great blessing to all it's entitled mother was beautifully given thank you ladies for that and um, the words of that song certainly bless all of our hearts today well in just a moment we're going to have an opportunity to hear from Fred Yagel and he's going to share 
a word from the family. And then after Fred, there's going to be an opportunity for anyone that is prepared to share a word of memory or testimony. If you'd like to share something like that, in just a moment, we're going to ask you to come sit on this front row. And that way it's a shorter walk here to the podium to share your memories or thoughts today about Mary. But before Fred comes, I want to read the eulogy that was put together by the family. And I hope everybody picked up a program on the way in. If you did not receive one of these, make sure you get one on the way out. It's got a beautiful picture on the cover. I just love this picture. Uh, it just captures the essence of Mary, doesn't it? And, um, but information on there. Inside of this is her obituary, which is an official uh, written document. But the eulogy I'm about to read a little more casual and personal from the family. And so I'll read that at this time. Mary Elizabeth Yeago was born on December the 11th, 1925, in Pablo Beach, now called Jacksonville Beach, Florida. Mary was the daughter of the Reverend Theodore Gibson and Ruth Elizabeth Gibson. She was one of six children. She had two sisters and three brothers. Mary was preceded in death by her parents, her siblings, her beloved husband, Wesley, and last year, her daughter, Carol Sullivan. I am sure there was a huge welcoming committee and celebration in heaven that Mary had finally come home. She was 98 years old. Mary met her husband, John Wesley Yagel Jr., when she was very young. He was a good friend of her brother, Earl, and was often at their house along with lots of neighborhood kids who congregated at the Gibson home. Wes became like a member of the family. At first, Mary said, he was like a brother to me. As their friendship grew and blossomed, Wes always said, to Mary, someday I'm going to marry you. Mary would respond, you and who else? <laughs> Wes then went into the Navy and soon Mary got a package from Wes. And inside was an engagement ring. And he had written a note, you and I are engaged now. Save the ring and when I get first leave, we will get married. Mary and Wes were married on September the 11th, 1944, when she was 18 years old. They were married for 58 years until Wesley entered into his heavenly home in October of 2002. Soon, Mary and Wes were blessed with four beautiful daughters, Carol, Susan, Sandy, and Brenda. Mary and Wes raised their family in Miami, Florida, and over the years were members of Baptist churches serving in leadership positions over the years, their family grew to include 10 grandchildren and 10 great-grandchildren. Mary loved to read, and her embroidery and sewing skills were amazing. In her 90s, Mary got a smartphone, learned how to text, and join Facebook. Soon, she was spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ to everyone she knew without having to make a single phone call. What a day of rejoicing that was, such a time saver. Mary had several careers in her lifetime. With a degree in early childhood education from Stetson University, she taught kindergarten and first grade in the elementary school. Later, she went into the banking industry and became the assistant vice president at Coconut Grove Bank in Miami, Florida. She retired after 28 years, but her most important job was sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, helping others in need with spiritual wisdom their material needs, and her prayers. Mary was known as the prayer warrior for our family, friends, and the entire neighborhood. Mary said, if what I have done for others has helped make life a little easier for them, then I have done the job God gave me to do. Wes passed away in 2002, and soon Mary moved to Cooper City, Florida, to live with daughter Sandy and her husband Jim, where she lived for the last remaining 19 years of her life. When the question was asked of Mary, for what would you like to be most remembered? Mary would say that I put God first in my life and that he has always taken care of me and our family, that I have served him as best as I knew how with the spiritual and material gifts he has given me. I cannot say that I have always lived as a Christian ought to, there were times when I drifted out of fellowship with my Lord, and I deeply regret those times. But I know my Lord has forgiven me because his word says he is faithful and just to forgive. 
He has carried me through life with such joy and love. There is nothing to compare that I pray every night for everyone in our family, my daughter's families, my brothers and sisters' families, that they come to a saving faith in Jesus Christ so that we all will meet again in heaven someday. And that Jesus is the answer to all of life's problems. It is not about religion. It's all about a relationship with Jesus Christ. He has done for me what no one else could do. He died for me. And thank the Lord for that testimony from the family and directly from Mary herself. At this time, I'm going to invite Fred Yeagle to come and share just a word on behalf of the Yeagle family. And if you'd like to share a testimony or a memory, if you'd like to come and sit on this front row, that's fine. Or if you're sitting near the podium, you can uh, just make your way up here, but we'll try to get that ready and prepared. And when Fred is done, we'll introduce others to come on up. God bless you, Fred. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Fred Yeagle. I'm the nephew of Mary, and it is really my honor to speak for the family on this day. And I'll give you a little warning, it's gonna to be tough for me too, folks. Um, Mary, my Aunt Mary, she was mother, she was grandma, she was great-grandmother, she was aunt, great-aunt, great-great-aunt to this family. And in her final years, she'd become the matriarch of this family, which meant a lot to each and every one of us. As such, our family would like to celebrate her this day uh, celebrate the impact that she had on each, on each one of us. Reflecting on her life and what she meant to each, each one of us, there are three aspects that come to mind. First of all was her positive outlook. She always shared the best of memories with us. You've seen the pictures, folks, the best of memories, the memories from her family experiences. And when any trials or difficulties occurred, they were met with a very positive response Things will be okay. You know that God is in control of all things, and that is a good thing. Second, her consistent encouragement of each and every family member. Through both the good times and some of the not so good times, she was always there to celebrate with us, to support us, and to console our family. She always had just the right words. She was a rock upon which many of us leaned. Lastly, and most importantly, was her faith in Jesus and her relationship with him. Mary, mom, grandmom, Aunt Mary, she wanted more than anything else for each family member of our family to know Jesus. To, and this never, never wavered. You know how she loved missions? Her first mission was to her family. She did this by sharing and being a living testimony of Jesus' saving grace each and every day. Grace and love, and she showed grace by never, never issuing a harsh word. Grace and love, that, that's what Mary was all about. When Uncle Wesley, my Uncle Wesley, went home to be with the Lord in 2002, there was a cornerstone hymn that was sung at the funeral that exemplified both his life and Aunt Mary's life. And that cornerstone hymn was Amazing Grace. I remember how much Aunt Mary loved it, and over the years to me, this song has had a very special meaning in regard to my Aunt Mary. In the words of that song, we the Yagel family and Mary's many, many friends can see the three aspects of positivity, encouragement, and faith. And in that song, we can see how each one of those aspects were exemplified in her life while she was with us and the glory of the reward in heaven that she has right now. Therefore, in honor of Mary Elizabeth Gibson Yale, we would love for you to hear and reflect upon those words. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace has brought me safe thus far, 
and grace will lead me home. The Lord has promised good to me. His word my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. Yea, when this flesh and heart shall fail and mortal life shall cease, I shall possess within the veil a life of joy and peace. When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we know less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. That was our Mary, my Aunt Mary. Love you, Aunt Mary, until I, until we all see you again. Fred, for that beautiful tribute. At this time, we'll open the floor here to anyone that would like to share a, a memory or a testimony. It could be just a short sentence or a, or a story you want to share, but as it's on your heart, go ahead. She told me to go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Carolyn Kennard. I met Mary, Sandy, and Jim several years ago in Sunday school class. And then when we um, disbanded for a period of time because of COVID, um, she did not come to Sunday school. And so Jim and Mary would bring her in here. And I'd scramble in to get a place real quick. Uh, so I'd be right in front of them. And then when Mary would stand up, I'd have to lean on the chair because she was about ready to pull it over. <clears throat> and then later on, Michelle came on and she uh, sat with her to lift her up. Now, Mary had <clears throat> a gift of sewing, and she made a couple of um, beautiful um, pillowcases for me. How many of you ladies have received a pillowcase? From Look at that. Look at that. And then when she couldn't do that anymore, she started sewing. So this is a scripture apron that I... I said I was going to wear it to the funeral. And then uh, when she couldn't do that anymore, um, I got a couple little blankets from her, a little kitty cat and an owl. And I was just astonished at her desire to make people happy with all of her talents. Well, we're going to miss Mary. Good morning, everyone. My name is Mindy Montaigne, <clears throat> and I wanted to share a few words with you today about Mary. There's something truly magical about Mary. She was the type of person who could create wonderful memories for everyone, everyone right out of thin air. I had the honor of meeting Mary 40 years ago when I was just 15 years old. She is the great grandmother to my two children, Hannah and Wesley Liverman. I call her Grandma Mary because she always considered me one of her granddaughters. Mary was the matriarch of the family and was filled with warmth and wisdom. She was the family's greatest treasure and the founder of a loving legacy. Mary was the greatest storyteller, the keeper of all family traditions, and built a strong foundation for her daughters. She made everyone in her life feel special and cherished. She had no enemies and never met a stranger. Everyone loved Mary. The love she had for her family, her friends, and her faith in Jesus was unconditional and unending. Mary always had time to talk. She was a little bit parent, a little bit teacher, and a little bit best friend all wrapped up into one. She always listened and gave advice when needed, but never passed judgment. She always remembered all of our accomplishments, and she forgot all of our mistakes. <laughs> Mary lived a long and happy life, and I'm sure everyone here today has fond memories of Mary with her sweet smile and her heart of gold. There was no limit to her generosity or her kindness. I will never forget the first time I truly noticed how generous and kind she was. 
It was Thanksgiving, probably 1987, and I was at her house for Thanksgiving dinner. We had just finished saying the blessing when I noticed Mary preparing a large paper plate of Thanksgiving food, and I asked her why she was wrapping up food before we had even began to eat. She said to me, I'm making this plate of food for somebody that doesn't have food. They've lost their family, and they do not have a place to live. She was speaking of a homeless man that hung around the bait and tackle shop where Grandpa Wesley worked. I knew exactly who she was talking about. She looked at me and she said, Mindy, always remember that it's always better to give than to receive. And from that moment on, she had taught me to give to others without wanting anything in return to see the good in people no matter what the circumstances were, and to always be empathetic and compassionate for others. Dearest Grandma Mary, words cannot express how much I will truly miss you. I know that you want us to keep moving and going on and to find happiness in life and to embrace the love that surrounds us. I honor your memory by living with the same grace, strength, kindness and compassion that defined you. You are now like a star in the sky. I might not always see you, but I know you are always there, and I will always love you up to God. Thank you for being you and shining your light on my life. Hi, I'm Sherry Broad. Um, Mary meant a lot to our family. Um, when I was started thinking about when did we really meet Mary and Wes Yeagle? Well, it was at Tamiami Baptist Church years ago, and we were just mere acquaintances. And Wesley just happened to be sitting on the end of the aisle. And when Mary looked through our wedding album, she goes, that's Wes. <laughs> and I'm like, really? Little did I realize, you know, at that time, this tremendous impact that she was going to have on our family and not only on our family, but even years later. Because I look at Wes and Mary, and they had a wonderful biblical example of the picture of Christ and the church. For years, we went our separate ways. And then in 1993, at West Kendall Baptist, we were meeting at Hammocks Middle School. In walked Mary and Wes with her mother in a wheelchair. Sarah was only five at the time. And she went over to greet them and was invited to sit in the wheelchair with Mary's mom. And at that moment, that bond began to grow that just grew stronger through the years. God sent Mary and her family at just the right time because at that, that year was when my mother-in-law came to live with us. And in the midst of that difficult time, Mary offered biblical advice and was there to support and encourage. In Proverbs 13, 20, it says, he who walks with a wise man or a woman will be wise. So Mary and her family continued on our pilgrimage as part of our congregation from a school to a storefront, and she kept praying in faith and believing that God would provide that permanent place for us to meet, and God did. He eventually did provide the property in a church building with willing hands and a heart for hospitality, outreach, and Bible study, as well as helping with social activities. She exemplified Romans 12:10, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly, sisterly love and honor, giving preference to one another. And I love the way she signed her cards, love you up to God. When I didn't feel confident I should teach a senior adult Sunday school class, she encouraged me. And just knowing she was there to help co-teach boosted my confidence. Even when I served as chairman of the personnel, uh, a pastor search committee, excuse me, Wesley encouraged and he brought godly advice to me in the search committee. And when Wesley uh, passed away, my husband Bob and Derwin Righam were the first ones to arrive at her home. As chairman of the uh, hospitality committee, I faced a very daunting task, but Mary rallied around to help find food, do food donations and volunteers, especially for Easter when our church provided a buffet breakfast for a thousand people that met under a tent. Oh, she organized the senior adults to stuff Easter eggs with verses and wrap candy and not to be outdone, she took eggs home and th that your children would have plenty to find on Easter Sunday. And in 2002, when Sarah went into ICU, Mary was there, praying along with others that God would intervene in the midst of a hopeless medical situation. 
at her bedside, she brought hope and joy and encouragement, which was also another example of 1 Thessalonians 5.11. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another, just as you are also doing. And when visiting the sick and gravely ill, Mary insisted, I bring a hymn book so we could sing around her bedside. After selling her house and moving in with Sandy and Jim in Cooper City, excuse me, <laughs> we gave her a key to our home. And every Tuesday, she would drive down, be part of our home ministry group that met in our house. Then on Wednesday night, she helped in the church kitchen for family night dinners. Thursday morning, she met with the senior adults at church. She would drive home only to return Sunday with Sandy and Jim for Sunday school and worship. And this continued for a few years as she voluntarily sought to keep that senior ministry alive. In Psalms 133.1, it says, Behold, how good and pleasant it is for brethren or sisters to dwell in unity. It was during those visits that she shared her bucket list to travel with us. So Mary always wanted to go on a Charles Stanley cruise to Alaska, so we booked a trip to go. Unfortunately, something came up, and she had her deposit refunded. But a few months later, she mentioned to me that she wanted to go to Italy. We'd never been to Italy, but we never planned that trip. Instead, this extraordinary woman continued to bless our hearts in our home and our church. And in Colossians 3.23, whatever you do, do it heartily unto the Lord and not to men. She embroidered the countless count, uh, pillowcases that we've talked about. Some were sold to sponsor missions in South Africa. I even helped her make 400 fully rely on God frogs to send to South Africa, the Vacation Bible School. And she also encouraged the senior adults to participate in, in uh, Billy Graham's Operation Christmas Child. And she and Sandy packed and donated countless boxes. But oh, the lessons we learned from her. Most importantly, she taught us the importance of unity within our senior adults and home ministry group. And we all became that extended family that loved, cared, and shared. And I'll never forget all the life lessons that she taught our family by investing in our daughter's lives. Her spirit will always live within us. In Psalms 4, 7, it says, You put gladness in my heart, and always forever young, we're left with decades of priceless influence. Till today, it's not just goodbye. Just see you later, because one day, I'll see her in heaven. Tribute to my dear Mary, 98 years of love and grace, a life well lived, a gentle embrace. Through seasons of joy and trials faced, her kindness and humor a cherished trace. In laughter she shared her many stories. She, she, she wove a tapestry of love second to none. Her legacy a beacon in life's vast sea guiding hearts toward compassion and glee. Now, in God's embrace, she rests serene. Eternal peace enfolds her weary soul as memories of her grace forever console. Her laughter echoed in gardens of delight, a matriarch, a friend, a beacon so bright. Mary's love enveloped us day and night. Her hands weathered by life's gentle storms, held stories of resilience, of love in all forms. In the warmth of her presence, so many memories were made. Her God-given wisdom she readily shared. Generations gathered around about her, listening to tales of her savior's worth. Her eyes like constellations held secrets untold, a universe of kindness, a legacy of gold. Now, as the winds whisper through ancient trees, Mary's spirit dances unburdened and free. In the quietude of dawn, we feel her near, a heavenly melody wiping away every tear. As Mary, Miss Mary, your legacy transcends time, a symphony of grace, a rhythm sublime. In our hearts, your love forever we'll embrace. In our hearts, we can hear your beautiful voice saying to us, shed no tears because I'm gone. Smile because I lived. Be full of the love that we have shared. Miss Mary Yeagle, your light will forever shine. A life well lived, a legacy so fine. 
In our hearts, your love will never cease. Rest now, dear soul, in everlasting heavenly peace. tell you, I am enjoying finding out many of the missing pieces I didn't know because I haven't known Miss Mary that long, but what a fabulous lady. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Connie Cotrere, and I am a friend of Miss Mary's and Sandy and Jim. Um, I definitely want to celebrate her life. And I first met Miss Mary here at First Baptist Church for a Senior Saints event. Our leader, Rebecca Besser, asked if someone would give their testimony and devotional. Well, Miss Mary stood up and took the podium. Now, <laughs> now, when I say she took the podium, I mean her demeanor and attitude was one of calm assurance. Um, like it was the most natural thing for her to do, to stand up and speak to peers with no prior notice, you know. Um, I don't remember everything she said, but by the end, I was convinced that she could be a CEO or stand-up comedian or both. She was so funny and smart. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I really was charmed by her magnetic personality and decided that she would be someone worth getting to know better. So I caught up with her and Sandy and Jim and told her how much I enjoyed her presentation. Um, after that, I made a point to chat with them and I began calling her Miss Mary. It's an old uh, Southern tradition that we use Miss as a title of respect and she certainly deserved that respect. I think one of her strengths and gifts was her ability to connect to people in a way that I've never seen anyone else do. Uh, she connected in a way that made people feel so special, uh, like they were the only ones in her life. I know, because she looked at me with those sparkly eyes, and it was just like I was the only one in her world. She made me feel so very special. I know other people felt the same way, too, because as Miss Mary's time to go to heaven came, Sandy, her beautiful daughter, asked me if I would let people know because we here at First Baptist had been praying for her and, and the family. That way Sandy could deal with her sorrow and grief and all the other details that had to be done. So I began notifying everyone and people would say, you mean my Miss Mary? And I would say yes. And several others said the same thing. My Miss Mary? And uh, and I knew that those sparkly, mesmerizing eyes had made many other connections. And you all are verifying that for me. So before her passing, she seemed a bit more frail and fragile. Well, after all, she was the oldest member of First Baptist Church at an amazing 98 years old. Well, I determined I wanted her to know how special she was to me. So one day, as I came down from the choir loft, to go to my seat, I was walking by her wheelchair and I just impulsively went over and gave her a big hug and told her that I loved her. Well, we both loved it and it became a routine that I did every Sunday. It was so cute that as I came up the aisle, I was behind her. So Jim and Sandy would watch for me and I would see their eyes and they would tell her that I was coming so we could have our little special hug and I'd tell her how much I loved her. So every Sunday, I'd search for Sandy and Jim from the choir loft to make sure they were here and that I was getting my hug. And when she wasn't there, I really felt bereft and sad. I missed my Miss Mary. So to all of you that I stepped on your toes as I zoomed in to get my hug, I apologize. Uh, but. I, I just, I needed to be with her and, um, and I was addicted to those hugs, what can I say? Um, I want to pay tribute to Sandy and Jim too. They faithfully brought her to church where they all wanted to be and both of them adored and just doted on Miss Mary. I found out what a sterling man Jim, won, uh, Jim was one day when we both 
happened to walk out of Walmart and stop to chat for a few minutes. Jim impressed me so much with his genuine love for Sandy and for Miss Mary that I changed his name. Jim, did you know that? <laughs> I changed his name from Jim, J-I-M, to Jim, G-E-M, like a precious jewel. I don't think he knows it, but he does now, Mr. <laughs> Jim. I think we have all been blessed by knowing Miss Mary, but I actually think that I'm the most blessed because Miss Mary called me, me, her baby. <laughs> I'm her baby. And she told me she loved me. So I'm very, I feel very special and very blessed indeed. Thank you, Miss Mary. God bless her family and all who loves Miss Mary. She is rejoicing with her Savior in paradise. If there's anyone here today that wants to make sure that they will see Miss Mary again in heaven, simply ask Jesus to come into your heart now and save you from your sins so you can be with Miss Mary and her Savior. God bless you all. My name is Mary, and I attended church here with Jim, Sandy, and Mary for the last several years. Shortly after I met Mary, she embroidered me a set of pillowcases of my favorite color, purple. <laughs> Later, when Mary learned about my love of cats, she made me a set of pillowcases with cats on them as well. Mary and I were special friends. We were born exactly 59 years and two weeks to the day apart. We would often laugh about how the best people in the world were born in December and named Mary. <laughs> Mary took the time to seek me out, a new member of our church, and made me feel important. She paid attention to the small details of my life. Mary was one of the most joyful people I've ever known. She embodied the joy of the Lord, no matter her circumstances. She had joy that can only come from the Lord in her life, in her heart. She was always smiling. True joy is internal, unlike happiness, which can change based on our circumstances. And Mary had true joy. Mary exuded the love of Christ to all who knew her. And she had a servant's heart by being the hands and feet of Jesus. I will miss her joyful smile, her voice, and her big hugs each week. And I am eternally grateful that the Lord allowed our past across and I take great comfort knowing I'll see her again in heaven everyone loved Mary she just had a special way about her I would like to read a few tributes from two of her friends she knew about 40 or 50 years ago as well as a poem from a young woman who was in a Sunday school class Mary taught years ago to know Mary is to love her. Reed and I met Mary and Wesley nearly 55 years ago, shortly after Jason was born. Susan and Bob had invited us to go with them for their family's regular Sunday dinner in Miami. My life changed that day when I met Mary and Wesley. I immediately felt welcomed, loved, and accepted. I had just met my second family. Mary reminded me of my own sweet mother. She was so warm, wise, and lots of fun. I was also blessed to meet Mary's mother and be in the room as she prayed over our meal. And wow, what a prayer that was. It didn't take me long to know what a prayer warrior that Mary was. I and my family have been on Mary's prayer list multiple times and those prayers have made a great difference in our lives. At Christmas of 1980, after the birth of our third baby, 
Somehow Mary knew that our money was a bit scarce. She made it possible for our two older girls to have a beautiful Christmas. Reed and I both cried over her and Wesley's love and caring about us and our girls. My family and I love Mary dearly. She has been the hands of Jesus many times over. There will be countless souls in heaven because of her prayers and how she shared the love of her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, each and every day. In the early 50s, it was the Billy Graham era, and Mary was my Billy Graham. She was an amazing neighbor and friend. She cared about people. She talked and walked the faith. Inviting my family to church was the turning point in my life. She helped me through my depression when I was widowed with three small children. When I couldn't stay focused, she would lend a hand vacuuming the, my floors. Whenever I wanted to speak or borrow a loaf of bread, she never turned me away. I am so grateful my children grew up with her children. In our heavenly home, we will be neighbors again. A teacher with patience and devotion lit our path. Mary, your name etched in, a, in memory's golden frame, a beacon of light, a vessel of grace. She taught us more than verses. She lived out every line. In her eyes, we glimpsed eternity, a love so pure, so divine. A zeal for God consumed her with the truth she wielded. She taught a group of ladies, seeking truth with ancient stories, challenging us to live beyond the ordinary, to play our parts and hold God close to our hearts. Holiness was Mary's anthem, and we sang it loud and clear. In the echo of her words, we found purpose, not fear. You cared for us like family, though no blood ties did bind. Your love a testament to Christ, the greatest of its kind. Remembering all of the craft fairs you embroidery, she unselfishly did for a Haitian orphanage. During Christmas, Mary always gave us gifts that made us feel included and special. Today, I honor Mary. Her legacy lives on in all that she taught me. Thank you for your kindness and for planting seeds that have now bloomed. May your reward be heavenly, where angels sing your name, and generations yet unborn will know the love you claimed. This time we'd like to read a few of passage from scripture. If you follow along in the program, we'll read these. The first passage of scripture we'll read is found in Philippians 4, 6 through 7. And this speaks of the path to peace. The Bible says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. 1 Peter 5, 6-7 speaks that we are to cast your care upon the Lord. The Bible says in verse 6, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. The Gospel according to John, chapter 16, and verse 33, this speaks as Jesus, as the source of peace. The Word of God says, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Amen. Would you stand with me? We'll continue this memorial service in a song. Another song requested by the family, hymn 627. What a day that will be as Brother Dwight comes to lead us. There 
is coming a day when the heartache shall come. No more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. And I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. There be no sorrow there, no more burdens to bear, no more sickness, no pain, no more parting over there. And forever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day, glorious day. That will be what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see and I look upon the face of the one by his grace when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. What a day, glorious day. Thank you. you. may be seated. I'm going to ask our ensemble to come and be ready to sing. And Mary loved gospel music. She loved singing that lifted up the Lord Jesus Christ. And she loved the ensemble here at our church that would sing. And I'm not the best singer. Every now and then they let me sing with them, you know. But Mary thought I could sing. She would tell me, you need to sing with them. <laughs> so we did. Carol and I joined the ensemble for, for a song that became one of Mary's favorite, I think. And so we're gonna sing it in her memory today and her, her request, at the name of Jesus. Jesus, though he was God, did not cling to his rights as God, but laid aside his mighty power, his mighty power and glory, taking the form of a servant and becoming like men.
She loved the name of Jesus, and she loved the person of Jesus. And I want to share just a few words today from the Word of God. If you have your Bible with you, I would invite you to open up with me to the Old Testament book of Ecclesiastes in chapter 7. And I have with me up here today, I have one of Mary's Bibles. And so I asked Sandy and the family if I could have this for today. And I've had it for a few days. And this is not her only Bible. She had many Bibles that she had read through and studied and memorized and taught to others. And uh, Mary was someone who liked to mark things in her Bible. And I, I do that as well. I know many of us do that. But she'd make notes and she'd highlight certain verses, I think, that were special to her. But boy, as I read through this particular um, copy of her Bible, there's highlighted areas all through it. And you can see where she read and where she meditated and the notes that she made. And I even found some notes I think she might have made when I was preaching. And so I enjoyed seeing some of those. And um, what a joy it is to see a Bible like this that was cherished by someone, loved, and uh, read. And that's why we have God's Word, to read it, to learn it, to obey it. And Mary certainly did that. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 is a very precious portion of Scripture for many of us. And especially at a time like this, in a place like this, this might be called today a house of mourning. Um, a place where we've come to gather together, of course, to celebrate her life, to celebrate her salvation, but also to find a time to, for sorrow and mourning. And that's there's godly sorrow and there's godly mourning. And we need that, don't we? God made us in his image and we have emotion. And those emotions will come and go and sometimes they'll come in waves. And those of us who've been through the death of a loved one know that very well. But at a time like this, what is God doing? What does God want to do? in this meeting today. Well, this particular scripture speaks to that. And I don't use this particular scripture for every funeral, but I felt very impressed by the Lord to use this today. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, beginning of verse number 1, the word of God says, A good name is better than precious ointment, and the day of death than the day of one's birth. It is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. For that is the end of all men, and the living will lay it to his heart. A very interesting passage. You know, the Bible here mentions several important things. It mentions death, and it mentions mourning, and it mentions birth, and it mentions feasting. But I want you to notice a word, if you have your Bible there, and maybe you, like Mary, like to mark things in your Bible, but there's a word I want you to mark. It's found in verse 1. It's also found in verse 2 and throughout the chapter. But in verse 1, it is the word better. Better. A good name is better than precious ointment. And the day of death and the day of one's birth. And so there's an understood better there in the second part of verse 1. In other words, the day of death is better than the day of one's birth. How could that be? How could the day of your death be better than the day of your birth? And yet, it says that in God's word. And then verse 2, it says, it is better, again the word is found, better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. So I want to speak for a few minutes on that one word, better. Better. Mary learned what was better. She has entered in now, as she's entered into eternity, she's entered into that better. In the New Testament, the Apostle Paul went further than that. Solomon wrote Ecclesiastes, but Paul said... To depart and to be with Christ is far better, far better. And Mary not only learned what was better and entered into the better, Mary had a desire for others to experience the better. She wanted her family to be saved. 
She wanted her friends to know the Lord as her Savior. She wanted everybody she met to learn and experience the better that only Jesus Christ can give us. Death brings many questions. It always does. But in Jesus, we find all the answers. Now, he doesn't always give us the answers on earth. There's a lot of questions in my life that I still have the answers for. But I give that to the Lord, and one day in heaven, we'll understand it better by and by. But this passage of Scripture is about life and death. It's about perspective on what is truly important and what is better You know, in the world's economy, many things are lifted up as great or better. But God's word shows us the true better. As we look at this passage, we're reminded of the New Testament, which which gives us more light about life and death and eternity and the salvation that only Christ can give. The Apostle Paul wrote to the church at Corinth in 2 Corinthians 5, 8, and he wrote to these believers in Jesus Christ, these, these saved ones, these Christians, and he said, we are confident, that's a strong word, it means that there's no doubt remaining, we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. The Bible teaches us that when the saint of God, when the child of God, the saved one, the believer in Jesus Christ, when they die, they immediately enter into the presence of the Lord. When Mary closed her eyes in death on earth, she opened her eyes into eternal life in heaven. Her spirit is there with the Lord. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And one day, her body, the remains of her earthly tabernacle, will one day be resurrected. And we read about that in, in, in 1 Thessalonians and 1 Corinthians. And she loved those passages. I, I looked them up, and she had them all marked up. And in, in 1 Corinthians, which I'll read down at the graveside later, she wrote in her Bible, resurrection ground. <laughs> but she knew the better in Christ. I want to show you from this passage a couple of things from Ecclesiastes. Number one, we must remember her place in our life. I want to encourage the family this morning and all the friends in church, remember Mary's place in your life. Not everybody has a good name. Let's be honest about it. I have preached a lot of funerals, and some funerals are harder to preach than others. But it wasn't hard to preach this one. Mary had a good name. The Bible says here in our text, Ecclesiastes 7, 1, a good name is better than precious ointment. A name speaks of a reputation. It speaks of a person. It speaks of their essence, who they are. Could you, could you, weren't you blessed by those testimonies today? And I'm sure all of us could have said more than what was said, but boy, that was, that was something to hear that. We heard things about her that we all recognize, and perhaps we learned some new things about Mary today that blessed our heart. But that is that happens, what we just heard and experienced, when someone has a good name. A good name. She lived her life in a way that honored the Lord and blessed people. And that's how I want to live my life. And I would encourage you, live your life that way. Because a good name is better than precious ointment. Precious ointment here is talking about something that's very valuable, something that would have been a a high price or costly things. And so many people live for earthly things. They live for money. They live for fame. They live for the here and the now. But Mary lived for the by and by. She invested in what was truly important. She invested in the work of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ, and she invested in the lives of others. She found the better. So remember her place in your life. Everyone has a legacy. Some good, some bad. But Mary has a good legacy. You know, those verses that were chosen to be read that Brother Matt read earlier, all those verses really, they kind of centered around a couple of things, didn't they? Peace and victory. And Mary loved those truths, the peace that only Christ can give, the victory that Christ can give. But I want to say, Her testimony went beyond that. Mary was an encourager. She loved people. And she loved me. And I want to say a personal word. I know she had many pastors in her life, including her own dad. He was her first pastor. 
but I got to be her last pastor. What an honor. And she loved me. We had a connection, Mary and I, because we were both preacher's kids. I grew up at a pastor's home, and she did too. So we had that PK connection. you got to watch out for those PKs, you know. We teased about that. But Mary was an encourager. Many of you could testify to this as well. But I remember, I remember one particular night. We were having a banquet here at the church, and we were using this room for our banquet. It was the missions banquet, I believe, and she was sitting right back here. And that particular night, you know, pastors are always trying to encourage others, right? We're our, that's our job is to help others and counsel and lift. But that particular night, I was struggling. I had a burden. And um, Mary somehow sensed that. And I went over and said hi to her. She said, sit down here with me. And I sat down at the table with her, and we just began to talk. And she began to tell me a story about her dad. He was a pastor, and she told me a story about a struggle he went through and how God brought him through it. She said, God is with you, pastor. He's going to get you through it. And she just smiled at me. She encouraged me that night. Many of us could share stories like that. So remember her place in your life, her generosity, her hard work, her dedication, her love for God and people. Secondly, rejoice in her promotion. Rejoice in Mary's promotion. You know, we don't sorrow today for Mary. We sorrow for her family. We sorrow for ourselves. But there's no sorrow for Mary. Mary is rejoicing in heaven. See, the Bible says in verse 1, the latter part, and the day of death better than the day of one's birth. How in the world could a, could a day of death be better than a day of birth? The only way that can be true is if you're saved by the grace of God. You've been forgiven and saved and you know Christ as your Savior and heaven is your home. Because watch, when Mary was born, the day of her birth, she entered into a cursed world. But the day of her death, she entered into heaven's glory. That's better. That's better. Somebody once said, when you were born... You wept, <laughs> you cried, while everybody else around you in that delivery room was rejoicing. But if you live your life in such a way that you come to know Jesus as your Savior, and you live for God, when you die, you rejoice, and everyone else weeps. And that's a great truth we find in this scripture. Mary's day of death was better than her day of birth. Because it's the day she got to meet Jesus. What a truth. She's in a far better place. Mary has a far better perspective now. She sees it all from heaven's view. We'll understand it better by and by. And she's with a far better person. She's with her Lord. And then lastly, this morning, I want to say this. Not only does this, this Bible text remind us to remember her place in our life, her name, not only does it remind us to rejoice in her promotion, but then it challenges us. This text challenges us, the living ones. And the challenge is this, reevaluate your own path in life. Reevaluate your life. Verse 2 says this, It is better to go to the house of mourning than to the house of feasting, for that is the end of all men. In other words... The scriptures here remind us that we are never to forget one day we're going to pass into eternity, just as Mary did. We may not live to be 98. I hope we all do, but we may not. But that is the end of all men. And then it says, and the living, that's us, will lay it to his heart. In other words, the testimony, the name of the one who has gone before us, impacts our heart we'll lay it to our heart what decision what adjustment needs to be made in our lives today this is a this is a time for decision it's a time for receiving it's a time for change if needed it's a wonderful thought somebody once wrote I read of a man who stood to speak at the funeral of a friend he referred to the dates on the tombstone from the beginning to the end he noted that first came the date of birth and spoke of the following date with tears. But he said what mattered most of all was that dash between those years. 
For that dash represented all the time she spent alive on earth. And now only those who loved her know what that little line is worth. For it matters not how much we own, the cars, the house, the cash. What matters is how we live and love and how we spend our dash. So think about this, long and hard are the things you need to change. For you never know how much time is left that still can be rearranged. To be less quick to anger and show appreciation more and love the people in our lives like we've never loved before. If we treat others with respect and more often wear a smile, remembering that this special dash might only last a little while. So when your eulogy is being read, with your life's actions to rehash, would you be proud of the things they say about how you lived your dash? Think about that today. Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? Do you know that heaven's your home? This is the greatest desire Mary had. I spoke to her about that. I've read some of the things that she wrote. She wanted her family and friends to be in heaven one day. Will the circle be unbroken? By and by, Lord, by and by. If you're in this meeting and, and you've never personally asked Jesus Christ to forgive your sins and save your soul, I know that Mary would want me to say this. Listen, Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Can I tell you, today's a good day to be born again. Today's a good day to ask Jesus Christ to forgive your sins and save your soul. And if you'll make that decision, the Bible promises you that you will go to the same heaven Mary's in. And one day, because of Jesus Christ, we'll all be reunited. We don't get to heaven by living a good life or being a good person. We certainly can't save ourselves, can we? The church even can't save us. Religion can't save us. Good works or giving, doing good things. None of those things are good enough to save us because we're all sinners. We're all falling short of the glory of God. We all have our faults and our failures. But Jesus came and lived the life we couldn't live. He lived the perfect life, tempted in all points like as we are, yet without sin. He died on the cross in our place. He took our place. He took our sins upon himself and the wrath of God, almighty God, was poured out upon the Son of God. And Jesus took the penalty of sin that we deserve, glory to his name. He shed his blood for us as the price of our redemption. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. We just celebrated Resurrection Sunday, didn't we? It was a borrowed tomb because he did not need it very long. Because on the third and appointed morning, up from the grave he arose. Christ rose again and conquered death, hell, and the grave. He ascended on high. He is in heaven today doing many wonderful things. But one of the things that Jesus is doing is this. He is listening and waiting on anyone who will call on him in faith and ask him to save them. The Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I know that I will meet Mary again. I know she's in heaven based on her own testimony. And t this morning, I want to read to you Mary's own words. In about 1996, she wrote out her personal testimony. And we have that preserved. I would encourage you, if you've never done that, you ought to write out your testimony. It's a blessed thing to do for your family and friends. But I want to read to you what Mary wrote about her own faith in Jesus Christ. Here's what she wrote. She says, hello, my name is Mary Yagel. Being the daughter of a Southern Baptist minister, I was raised in a Christian home. I had five brothers and sisters. We really, in our younger years, gave our parents many hours of what are we going to do with these children. However, she writes, as we grew in the fear and admonition of the Lord, so to speak, we finally became very proper young people and seldom gave our parents many sleepless nights. Always we had to listen as well-meaning church members told our parents how to raise us to be examples to others. Or if we did wrong, no matter what it was, it was always reported to my dad. Of course, he was the one person we did not want to know because he was the strict disciplinarian and he believed we as the pastor's children should almost be perfect. 
My mother, bless her heart, seemed to know that children will be children. And there was no one perfect on this earth except one named Jesus. She was the most godly person you'd ever want to meet. A very great inspiration and influence in our lives. She saw that we went to church and Sunday school every Sunday, prayer service or Wednesday night service. And just about every time the church doors were open. However, I felt a need for something further in my life. On a particular Sunday morning, shortly after my 11th birthday, I was sitting in my usual second row pew. We children all had to sit together on that second row every Sunday. My dad was in the pulpit bringing the morning sermon, and I began to feel there was something different going on in my life. I had the feeling that he was preaching directly to me telling me about a man named Jesus that died just for me on the cross of Calvary and that no matter how good I thought I was, without Jesus in my heart, I would never be good enough to abide with him in heaven unless I repented of all my sins and accepted him into my heart. I began to realize that I needed Jesus more than anything in this life. I had heard all the Bible stories and known all about Jesus all my life but he was not in my heart personally. As my dad gave the invitation, I timidly moved off the second row pew, and when he looked down and saw me, there were tears in his eyes. His first question to me was, are you sure you know what you're doing? My answer to him was the same as it would be today. Yes, I am very sure. The Christ who I found then is still the same Christ who lives in me now. Praise God, and she put an exclamation point. Mary's testimony of salvation is precious because it is that decision that she made as an 11-year-old girl that determined her, her eternal home. Mary made many decisions in life, but no decision in her life was more important than that one. Have you made that same decision? If not, would you make that decision today? Come to Christ. I conclude my message today with a note that I found in Mary's Bible. As I was going through it, I found this little note that she wrote. And here's what she said. When death one day comes for me, I shall go with a smile on my face and a hallelujah on my lips. And no fear in my heart because my God will be coming for me. And where I will be going, no more troubles will ever I see. And all God's people said, Amen. let's pray together this morning. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Our Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the comfort that it gives, Lord God. I thank you for the direction that it gives, even the conviction that it brings to our own lives. Lord, I pray this morning that you'll bless the memory of Mary Yagel. She had a good name. She chose the better. She chose to live for you and your glory, not her own. She lived for the eternal, not the earthly. God, thank you for that. Help us to remember her place in our life. Lord, this morning we rejoice in her promotion. We're thankful that she's in a far better place and she's with a far better person. But this morning, God, I pray that you'd help us, the living now, to reevaluate the path of our life. Lord God, I pray if there's anyone in this meeting that needs to be saved, that even now, even today, they will trust you as their Lord and Savior. They'll ask you to forgive them of their sins and save them today. And then, Lord, for those of us that are Christians, may we live our lives for thee. Forgive us of our selfishness, our pride, our sin. Lord, our missteps. Help us, guide us, direct us. Help us to use every day you give us for thy honor and glory. Help us to know your word and to obey it, to live it, to tell it to others. Help us to get the gospel of Jesus Christ to this world. In Jesus' name, heads are bowed and eyes are closed. No one's looking around. I feel led today to do this. If you're here this morning and know that you need, you need to be saved, you need to make that decision that Mary made as an 11-year-old girl. Many of us in this room have already made that decision. But you know you need to get it settled today. You need to ask Christ to forgive your sins and save your soul. Right where you sit, right where you are, in your heart, would you pray to the Lord?
would you pray something like this? Pray, dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that without you, I would not go to heaven. But I believe you died for me and that you rose again. That you are the way, the truth, and the life. I repent of my sin. I trust you as my Lord and Savior this moment. Help me live for you from this day forward. In Jesus' name. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. If you prayed that with me this morning and you've asked Christ to forgive your sins and save your soul at this memorial service, if you did that with me just now, would you just let me know by lifting your hand, lift it up high where I can see it, and then bring it back down. And I would love to pray for you and pray over you. How many Christians today would say, Pastor Odom, pray for me that I'll live a life that would honor the Lord. Would you raise your hand today? There's many like that. Let's lay it to our heart. Heavenly Father, thank you for the sweet time. What a sweet service this has been. Father, I thank you that Mary's name and Mary's memory lives on in our lives and our hearts. Bless now the family, especially the family. Comfort them. Be with them. Thank you for their faithfulness. Thank you for the love that they have shown to Mary. Thank you for the sacrifice that was given. And Lord, I pray that you'll bless now the remainder of our day, even the burial service to come be glorified in all things in jesus name we pray and all god's people said amen i invite you to stand with me we're going to sing one more song mary had a third song a favorite song here it's entitled until then until then hymn 598 and uh, mary knew that heaven was her home and she knew one day she'd leave all the sorrows and all the pain behind but she wanted to live her life faithfully, so this was a theme song of hers. May it be true of our lives. Until then, may we sing it together with faith in our heart, joy in our heart.
well. You may be seated in the congregation. In just a moment, I'm going to ask the funeral director to come and just give us a final word of instruction. Before she comes, uh, she can come on up.